China, and welcome to Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, brought to you by the Kiwani Foundation. I'm Ahuke Kahu Cardwell, and here we are today at the University of Hawaii, at the Manoa campus on the island of Oahu. And I promise you this, we have a great guest on the show, so let's go on over here and meet him. Professor Chang, aloha. Aloha. How are you? Fine today. Welcome to Voices of Truth. Professor Williamson Chang, did I say your name right? That's correct. Wonderful. And you teach law here at the Richardson That's Law correct. School. Wow. How long have you been doing that? Uh, 38 years. 38 years. Long time. In the 38 years you've been here teaching law at University of Hawaii, you haven't just been teaching students. You've been doing something else, haven't you? Yes. You've been doing some research on Hawaii. Right. And According to my understanding, you've discovered some stuff that's pretty interesting as it relates to Hawaii's relationship to the United States, yes? Yes. Tell us about that. Well, I discovered three things. Uh, first, one deals with the joint resolution. Now, what is the joint resolution? The joint resolution is the act of Congress by which the United States claims to have acquired the Hawaiian Islands. So this is like back in the late 1800s, long time ago. Long time ago. And so tell us what you discovered about that joint resolution. Well, like everyone who grew up here, or almost everyone, um, I was taught that the joint resolution was a method by which the United States acquired Hawaii. And having uh, some doubts about that, I went into the archives of the University of Hawaii Library and looked up the Senate's debate on the joint resolution. Now, there was a long debate on the joint resolution, and what I discovered shocked me. In fact, it stunned me. You had senators, such as Senator Allen from Nebraska, saying things like, a joint resolution is just a bill or an act of Congress. A bill or an act of Congress is not a treaty. Only a treaty can acquire territory of another sovereign nation. A bill or an act of Congress is limited to the territory of the United States. There's no way that it can acquire Hawaii. They didn't say it was just unlawful, it was. They didn't just say it was unconstitutional, it was. They said it was impossible. In other words, it had no capacity to acquire the Hawaiian Islands. Okay, so wait a minute, so stop right there. So this debate that occurred happened in the late 1800s. This it happened in June and July of 1898. 1898. And so you went back and you read the words that they spoke back then right. in debating as to whether what they were about to do to acquire Hawaii was legal. And a lot of them back then said no. Not only illegal, impossible. Impossible. And I want to stress the impossibility. Like our, uh, it's easy to say that something might be unconstitutional, like the bombing in Vietnam. People argue it's unconstitutional, but it happened. This was not only unconstitutional, this joint resolution, it was impossible for it to have any effect on Hawaii. Let me give you um, the best explanation. The best explanation is if the Congress of the United States, by a law of the United States, could take Hawaii, isn't it true that Hawaii, uh, the, the nation of Hawaii by its legislature, could pass a law to take the United States? I never thought of it that way. In other words, nations are equal in sovereignty. They may be different in size, but they're equal in their absolute power over their territory. What is sovereignty? It's the absolute lawmaking power that a nation's government has over its territory. But it doesn't have any power over territory of another nation. If it did, uh, it could basically acquire that nation and then that nation wouldn't be equal any longer. Okay, so let me, I think I understand what you're saying. Let me just see if I can explain it back to you. In order to acquire another nation, you need to pass a treaty Right. not a joint resolution. Yes. But the United States passed a joint resolution instead of a treaty to try to make Hawaii part of the U.S. But even back then they said that's not only illegal, that's impossible. It was impossible. And the reason they used the joint resolution instead of the treaty was because they tried to pass the treaty, but the treaty failed. The treaty right. failed, and you know why. I do know why, but tell us why. Uh, largely because 21,000 Hawaiians signed petitions called the Kuei Petitions, which... Uh, said no. Said no. They took it to the Senate because only the Senate has to ratify a treaty. And there was so much opposition in the Senate that in the winter of 19, 1897 and 1898, they never even took a vote. So there never was even a vote on the Treaty of 1897. Because they knew. They well, knew there was so much opposition. They knew there was so much opposition. Senators from North Dakota and South Dakota came. Senator Pettigrew wrote a book about it. Uh, he talks about a famous incident where he went to a church in Hilo, and it was packed. And he asked the Hawaiians there, uh, 
who's opposed to annexation? And they all stood up and said, we are. So Pettigrew said, we can't annex Hawaii. That violates American principles and values. It's consent by the governed that justifies a government. No consent from the people of Hawaii. In 1898, we had this failure of the joint resolution to acquire the United, uh, Hawaiian Islands. In 1900, Congress worked on a bill to establish a government for Hawaii. There was a lot of opposition to that because you haven't acquired Hawaii, said some senators. But when it came to, in this bill that was passed, establishing a government for Hawaii called the Organic Act, in section two, the Organic Act described the area that was gonna be in the territory as, quote, those islands acquired by the joint resolution. Now, what did we just discover? We just discovered that a joint resolution has no power to acquire anything of another nation or state. So if you say that what's in the United States is islands acquired by the joint resolution, you're saying that there's nothing in the territory of Hawaii. So they made up a, a, a kind of a facade, a kind of misrepresentation that, okay, we'll create a government and we'll pretend that we have go governance over you, but we can't legally say so. So, it's a, here's the thing that's really important. By the laws of the United States, under the Organic Act in Section 2, by the laws of the United States, they admit that they never acquired the Hawaiian Islands. Wow. So, if the United States courts pay attention to their own laws, if the president were to pay attention to the law that he must faithfully enforce under the Constitution, he would have to recognize that Hawaii was never part of the United States and is not today. So you know what that sounds to me like, Professor Chang? That sounds to me like a cover-up yes. for the mistake that occurred of passing a joint resolution instead of a treaty. Yes? That's right. Wow. So it's like if I wanted, if I said I owned a house, but I didn't put the specific address of the house, the number and the street, but I just said this house. Right. That's like what they did, right? That's right. Well, what and they did. they're saying because they said we own these islands, quote unquote, and the words these islands could mean any islands, could mean Bermuda, right. could mean Cuba, could mean anywhere, but they said these islands, that's what they used instead of the specific names, names of the Hawaiian island. islands, going island by island by, by island. island. That's very, very true. When you look at the territorial descriptions of all the states, they use lines of longitude and latitude to describe the boundaries of the states. They use from this mountain to this mountain peak as the lines that describe, say, Nebraska. They will say from the line that divides Nebraska and, well, the next state over to here will de define Nebraska. Hawaii says, it's almost like wherever Washington swept, this is the United States. They say whatever islands were acquired by the joint resolution are the territory of Hawaii. Now, it's clear that no islands were acquired by the joint resolution. So there's nothing in the territory of Hawaii. Professor Chang, this really blows my mind what you're saying about the Organic Act because you said that, you know, when they described all, all the other states in the United States like Nebraska, Oklahoma, Vermont, things like that, California, they gave very, very, very specific things like latitude, longitude, mountains. They, mountains. They were very specific in where it started and where it ended. But right. in Hawaii's case, that was completely absent in the Organic Act that claims that Hawaii is part of the U.S., right? Right. That's an amazing sleight of hand. You want to know why? Why? Tell me why. Because if there had been a treaty, Treaties are like the passing of, of land to another nation or the passing of goods to another person. With consent. With consent. You have to describe accurately what you're passing. Gotcha. So in every treaty, for example, the treaty by which the United States acquired Alaska, they're very precise, very specific in defining what was Alaska. They define it by longitude and latitude, names of islands, this, this boundary between the United States. So if you don't have a treaty, what you have is a unilateral description made by one party. And that one party has no ability to prove that it got this Hawaii from someone else. They could say, I could say, that bicycle is mine. And someone would say, where's your proof? I don't have any. 
what the United States doesn't have is a treaty like you don't have a receipt. A receipt would describe what you've bought and would have a description of it. That's why there's no description in the Organic Act. It's like the pink slip to a car. Pink slip to the it's car. It's missing because they never had it. It's the most powerful information, the strongest legal case that any people can have, particularly Hawaiians, that the Hawaiian Islands have never come under the jurisdiction of the United States. Why? Because it's like a confession in a criminal case. Wow. It's an admission. It's the defendant getting up and saying, yes, I murdered someone. Yes, I stole these goods. I never bought them from X. I just stole them. You have it right there. And it's a law of the United States. Wow. The United States Congress passed the Organic Act. So who more, who is more uh, supreme than the United States Congress at the laws of Hawaii? So what I'm saying is it's not just conjecture. It's, just not, it's not just an allegation. Moreover, it's not just under international law. It's under the laws of the United States itself. So if we apply the laws of the United States, they have to admit that Hawaii, under the Organic Act and the Statehood Act, is not part of the United States. But here's what's amazing to me, Professor Chang, is that the entire U.S. Congress, the president, everybody in Washington is continually operating to this day thinking that the Organic Act is valid and real. And Hawaii is a 50th state of the U.S. And it's not. It's not. Uh, well, let me tell you, can I start, talk to you about the Statehood Act? Yes. So that's the okay. third thing, right? The third thing is the description of the boundaries of Hawaii came up as an issue when Hawaii was moving towards statehood. The question was, what's going to be in the state of Hawaii? Now, during the years of the territory, there's a lot of problems because you didn't have any boundaries for Hawaii. And people said, what are we going to do about this? Well, the Constitutional Convention didn't know what to do about it. The Constitution they proposed to the United States said, Hawaii shall be what we know it to be. <laughs> That's all they said. <laughs> when, okay, they took that before Congress in 1953 and the senators and congressmen said, don't you have anything better than that? Can't you show us what Hawaii is? And the delegation from Hawaii kind of felt sheepish. They went home, they came back with uh, maps from gas stations like Chevron and Texaco. Sir, are you kidding me, I'm right? not kidding. Really? They couldn't show what was in Hawaii. There's no legal description. Someone kept pounding on the, on the desk saying, I want a real description of Hawaii, one with physical boundaries and, and latitude and longitude. Then they adjourned into secret session. Secret session? Secret session. Oh, boy. Um, but I got the transcripts of those secret sessions. But there are blanks in it, just like the tapes, the Nixon tapes. Right. And here's what I suspect. I call these the Anderson papers because I went to the Library of Congress and looked up the manuscripts of a senator from New Mexico named Anderson. And for some reason, he made a very, very good record of what it was to be doing. He was one of the few senators who I think figured it out. Hawaii has never been taken by the United States. He changed from being someone who's going to blow the whistle to someone who became a super patriot. And why? This was 1953 and 1954. It was the middle of the Cold War. The United States was super critical of Russia for intervening and um, imposing itself on the boundaries of other nations and other republics. The Iron Curtain. The Iron Curtain. Yes. The United States was the hero, stood for democracy, uh, consent by the government. They couldn't have an example in Hawaii in which they had taken Hawaii without the consent of the people and never actually taken it and now occupy it. So he became part of the cover-up. He became part of the cover-up. Wow. And here's what the cover-up entailed. They had to draft something that was so complicated and so uh, deep that while it actually said the same thing as in the Organic Act, it would fool everybody. And it took them six drafts to do so. And I have all six drafts. And in the final draft, the counsel for the committee says, boss, he writes in a little note that I found, I think we hit it. <laughs> and to make a long story short, the description goes like this. Uh, the state of Hawaii consists of everything in the territory, but not the islands of Palmyra, Johnston, Midway, Kingman, and it ends. Now, 
So it says what it doesn't contain rather it than what contain. it does. It doesn't contain. What's the point of telling us what islands are not in the state of Hawaii? It doesn't yeah. name Kauai. Yeah, but if you're doing sleight of hand, that's important. You're doing important. sleight of hand, it works. Yeah. Um, but no one picks up on this. Everyone assumes that because the United States is here, that the United States has acquired Hawaii, and the same rule of the Organic Act applies. The only islands in the state of Hawaii are those acquired by the joint resolution. So, Professor Chang, what you're saying to me and to our viewers is that the proof is has been right under our noses. The proof all is right this time. under our, our noses. Ever since the 1800s, with the joint resolution, with the Organic Act, some years later in what was it, 1910? 1900. 1900, and then finally the Statehood Act. All three of those show us right under our noses that Hawaii has never been part of the U.S. if we just look at it deeply enough and know what we're looking at. May I add one more thing? Yes. In 1959, the, this group in the Senate uh, decided Hawaii had to change its definition from the one in the state constitution, the one that says Hawaii is what we know it is, to this new federal description, which was a great cover-up. And so they had an election or a plebiscite in Hawaii. Question one, do you want to be a state? Everybody wanted to be a state. 94% voted for that. But question two is, do you agree to the boundaries set, set by the United States Congress? Uh -huh. And if you don't approve question two, you don't get to be a state. So that was sealing the cover up. That sealed the cover -up. In other words, we're not going to take you as a state unless you adopt the boundaries by which there's nothing in the state of Hawaii. We're not going to take you as a state unless you agree to the lies and fabrications that we laid down exactly. before. You got exactly. to take the whole thing or nothing. Right. Wow. Professor Chang, there's one more element we want to introduce for our viewers here on the show. Right. And that is this, these, these lands called ceded lands, spelled C-E-D-E-D. -E -D, right. Meaning that they were ceded over to who? Uh, they were ceded by the Republic of Hawaii with the joint resolution, by the joint resolution to the United States, and they were ceded back to the state of Hawaii. These are 1.8 million acres of land. So roughly half the acreage of Hawaii. Hawaii is 4 million acres, you're exactly right. Wow. Uh, these belong to the crown. They were like crown lands in England. And they belong to the government of the Kingdom of Hawaii. They're public lands. Now if the joint resolution had no power to take the sovereignty of Hawaii, and it was just a unilateral proclamation by the United States that we take you, it's like I take you as my bride. Why? I say you said so. I never said that. <laughs> but I said you said that. I take you as my bride. That proclamation idea. They also apply to lands. We take these lands, but we never gave it to you. But we take them because you said so. But I never said that. <laughs> well, we're going to write down that you did say that. The United States can't show how it got its lands from Hawaii. All, you look in these title searches, they say, by annexation. <laughs> What's annexation? It's a proclamation that I got it. Yeah. Uh, I unilaterally say it's mine. Right. There so, is no there's no evidence to back it up. There's no evidence to back it up. Wow. So the islands, both the sovereignty of Hawaii and the public lands of Hawaii were never taken by the United States. Wow. All right. Now, Professor Cheng, obviously in your law classes and teaching your students here at University of Hawaii. You obviously cover this material, right? Yes. And for a lot of your students, probably all of them, this is the first they've ever heard of this, huh? It's the first they've ever heard of it. What's their reaction to this stuff? The reaction is it's full, it's foolproof, it's 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 bulletproof, it can't be undermined, but what can they do? This is the atomic bomb. Wow. This blows up all power and sovereignty of the state of Hawaii and the United States over the Hawaiian Islands. So we called it the bomb 20 years ago. When are we going to drop the bomb, was the question. You know why? Because it makes everything into chaos. Who's in control? It would have to go back to the Kingdom of Hawaii. Now, students who are taking the uh, law program and want to take the bar and become lawyers, they don't want to hear about a bomb. <laughs> they, they're, they paid a lot of money to go to school, to become lawyers, to be able to make a great salary and you know live well in Hawaii. They're one of the lucky ones. So they want to keep things as it they is. They want to keep things as this. So the haves in Hawaii, um, lawyers and other people who have homes and things, want to keep things as they are. Uh, they, they, they see no reason why to upset it. 
but the have-nots, uh, a lot of Hawaiians want justice, and they don't have homes, or they don't have health care, or they don't have jobs that they're appropriate for their level of education. They want change, and they say that, well, it's no longer a question of morality. It's a question of law. What is the legal status of Hawaii? If you look at the laws of whom? The United States itself. Hawaii was never acquired by the United States. Wow. Professor Chang, what has it been like for you to live with this knowledge every single day? What has that been like? Uh, for 20 years, it's been very hard. Uh, 20 years ago, I went into court several times. One of the cases was we tried to argue that a foreclosure that was taking place was invalid because the bank couldn't prove that this house was in the state of Hawaii. I made the motion and I said the burden is on the bank and the bank tried for four months and they gave up. And they said to the judge, Your Honor, if what Professor Chang says is true, then nothing we've done here is valid. And the agreement among my team was once they said that, we would drop the motion in the hopes that we could begin negotiations because we knew that it's like saying, I'm not a judge anymore. I'm not a law professor anymore. It blows up everything. So it's like throwing up everything in the air, not knowing where it's going to settle. And I said, yeah, that's hard to fathom. Let's start talking about it. But they didn't start. Hmm. What they did in the second case was sanction me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, These are US courts, right? Uh, one was a state court, the first one. The right. second was a US court. They sanctioned me for making what they call the frivolous claim. Now, I'm writing a book now and articles that show that it's bulletproof. But the problem for judges is if they agree, and they should agree, they have to agree, if they believe in the rule of law, and if they believe their obligation under law is to follow the laws of the United States, they have to dismiss. But if they dismiss, everybody's off. Every home that's being in foreclosure is now in invalid proceedings. So they don't know what to do. So Professor Chang, when we started this show, we were talking about the events that happened back in the late 1800s. And now we're talking about the present. The present. But the same exact thing is going on in both eras, the late 1800s and now, which is people are going, what do we do? Because we, if we don't keep this cover up going, the only alternative is chaos. And we don't want the chaos, so we got to perpetuate the cover up. The same thing continues up to this day. Well, there is another alternative. OK, so and which that, is that? That is, if the United States never took Hawaii, then the Kingdom of Hawaii, which is the nation of Hawaii, still exists under the presumption of the continuity of a state under international law. And so the laws of Hawaii's kingdom would be applicable here today. So what you're saying is that the Hawaiian kingdom still exists today it because exists. Hawaii is not part of the US and never has been. And there's no act of the United States, the successor state, which extinguished or terminated the Kingdom of Hawaii. No act, no proof, no words, no pink slip, no, no pink measurements, slip. no nothing. Nothing. Absolutely unique in international law history. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Thank you so much, Mohalo, for being on Voices of Truth and explaining all of this to us. I know for a lot of this, this comes as new news. This comes as, wow, I never knew that. And it also comes as, I wonder what they're going to do now. Yes. So it's going to be interesting to see. Professor Chang, thank you for being on thank Voices you. of Truth, Mahalo. one on one with Hawaii's future. Keep doing what you're doing because, okay. man, boy, this is fascinating. Yes. This is fascinating. And to our viewers, mahalo to you for joining us and Professor Chang here at University of Hawaii and hearing all these amazing things about the history of Hawaii and the fact that the Hawaiian Kingdom really still does exist today. I'm at Huke Kahu Cardwell on Voices of Truth 101 with Hawaii's Future. Remember, you can watch us on the web 24-7 and like us on Facebook. So, until next time, ahoy ho!
Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one on one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24 7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also, view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.